Welcome to Trend Watch, your up to the minute source for the latest in fashion and style. On today's episode, shining the spotlight on emerging designers, Sophie Buhai and Lisa Mayock of Vina Cava, Alejandro Ingelmo, Jason Wu, Irene Newworth, and Richard Chai. Five of the ten CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund finalists each vying to be the winner of a $200,000 cash prize and a year of mentorship from an industry great. These are the 10 CFDA Vogue Fashion Fund finalists. They've traveled to Pebble Beach, California, home of the celebrated Concours d'Elegance, where the best of both design worlds merge. It's the first time they've come together as a group to show their collections on the same runway. It becomes this kind of like fashion hazing. So we all like bond because we're going through this process together. Vina Kava, the Brooklyn-based designing duo, knows the process well. This is their second year in the top 10. Just be able to really sit down and talk shop because there aren't a lot of people that we know that are doing the same thing as we're doing. Known for their hand-drawn prints and feminine detailing, Vina Kava has quite a following. But these self-financed designers know it takes more than creativity to build a brand. We need someone on the other end who's kind of a, an experienced person in the financial realm and knows about strategizing how to grow businesses. They, along with their fellow nominees, who were chosen from hundreds of applicants, are vying for the $200,000 grand prize and perhaps more importantly, a year of mentoring by an industry leader. Our big dream would be to have a store. Eventually, I think that would be a great way to kind of push the brand further and it'd be fun. Alejandro Ingelmo is a fourth generation cobbler whose family comes from Cuba, honed his craft at New York's Parsons School of Design. He's learned by immersing himself in all aspects of the business. Your whole body weight stands on that foot, so it's, it's, it's trying to engineer something that's very creative, very different, but at the same time serves a function. I don't just want to make a basic pump. That's not why I'm here. Indeed, there is nothing basic about his styles for both men and women. And my love is in designing the most fashion forward things. They're high and they're very sexy, a lot of straps. They're very complicated shoes, but that's what I love. Jason Wu's love of design started at a very early age. I've always been interested in fine art and I've been really drawing, painting and sculpting. Born in Taiwan, now Manhattan-based, Jason opened his ready-to-wear business in 2006. Unable to find prints he liked, he now creates all his own. I really start by rendering the prints by hand through watercolor, oil painting, whatever type of medium that necessary to get the effect. I scan it and custom print the fabrics digitally. My signature style is really just feminine dresses, pristine, neat, and really mixes a little bit of old work tour with new sort of modern spirits. His recent trip to Japan inspired spring 2009. And I've just always been very fascinated with urban Japanese life, you know, the neon lights on the streets, how colorful the characters are, and the young girls really experiment with fashion. For him, having a seasoned veteran to help guide his two-year-old business would be the most covetable prize. Eventually, I would love to do my own accessories as well. Now is the time for accessories. Just ask fine jewelry designer Irene Newworth. Right now, with the economy being so tight, I think that people really want to invest in things that are timepieces, can be passed down. Her uniquely modern yet timeless 18 karat gold designs in a wide array of rare gemstones certainly apply. All the stones that I use, it's all some of my precious stones, and some precious stones I use rose cut diamonds, a lot of moonstone. I try to mix unusual color combinations together. With a roster of celebrity clients, this California based designer who has been in the business for six years is honored to be part of this elite group. Exciting to be able to do the runway show, which I never normally get to do or never have done ever. It's a great opportunity to have the jewelry seen the way that I'd like to show it. Richard Chai's style sensibility is modern and feminine. With an extensive background in fashion, he's worked for Marc Jacobs, Donna Karen, Jeffrey Bean, and was creative director at Say. Chai knows how to create well crafted clothes. It has to do with the construction, it's the architecture, and it's really kind of the purity to my work, there's kind of a pure sense of design to it, but it's very deceptively simple. There's a sophistication with an intelligence behind it. He started his signature line in 2004. Every season it's kind of challenging myself and picking something new. For fall 2008, that meant working with Shearling, 
plus paillettes and embroideries. For spring 2009, his mood is structured yet ethereal. It's never really drawn from things that are so theme oriented. It's more of a mood and a feeling, creating something three dimensional. His creative vision is strong and well defined, but like most of his fellow designers, winning would mean adding infrastructure to his already successful business. I'm truly really honored to be here, and as well as just being able to do what I love to do every day of my life is complete freedom and a complete joy and a reward in itself. At this year's fashion preview, Lexus unveiled its latest creation, the LFA Roadster, a sleek combination of function and design. A rewarding look at design at its most visionary. Tune in to Lexus Fashion Preview Episode 2 to meet the remaining five CFDA Vogue Fashion Fun finalists. Alexander Wang, Alberta Swanepoel of Alberta's Cordis, Swain and Christina Hudson of Obedient Sons and Daughters, John Patrick and Juan Carlos Obando. Be sure to tune in to more episodes and don't forget to shop the shows.